All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start working on getting this level box repaired. This is all new to me, that's why it's red instead of blue, because the one on the tractor was an aftermarket and I just don't like the aftermarkets. This one was actually locked up, which I think it was just rusted because I was able to break it free and it spins. However, this top looks a little crooked on it, so this shaft here may be bent inside. I'm going to have to examine it. You can buy this shaft. However, I'm going to go ahead and warn you that I put one on the 861 and I bent it fairly quickly. So, if this one's good, I'm going to reuse it, but if I have to, I'll replace it. This fork is longer for the row crop model. You can buy the general purpose models, you know, 600, 800s, 8 ends. You can buy a replacement fork for them. However, I have not seen a replacement for the row crop. So be aware of that if this is damaged or welded or anything. So, first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and get this piece off of here. So, look at that. But this piece here is now essentially the same from an 8 in up to the 64. It's like I think that uh, this piece here may be different. I can't remember offhand, but everything up here is the same. To get this apart, there is a pin right here. And this one actually looks like it's kind of like a flattened rivet. But you're gonna have to drive that out and that will remove the crank and this gear first. Let's see if I can just knock it out or if I'm going to grind it off. Alright, so I'm going to have to grind that off there a little bit. So there's the rivet out. And as you can see, that was kind of a pain in the hind end. Especially since I now have my punch stuck. Alright, so once you get the rivet out, Should be able to separate the crank handle from this gear. Okay, and there's the crank handle. And this one has a little bit of wear. In this area right in here. And that's where it goes into the housing.
it is bent a little bit but they're pretty much always going to be bent and that's just because of basically this moving it's going to constantly hit right in that area and these just get bent over time the bend is not really going to affect anything the wear I may try to weld it I may not because it's not very much you can buy a replacement handle however they have the grip on it like the aftermarkets and I just really don't like them I like the OE style with a little ball so I'm gonna try and make sure that this is good and usable which I mean it's usable as it sets but you know let's try and fix any issues it has and this is the little gear that the shaft turns crank turns this gear is reproduced so you can get that if yours is broken or anything or like I say just find another one of these off 8N or something I mean any of them will work up here so now the easiest way to get the shaft out there's an expansion plug right here the, about the easiest way I have found to get this thing out is literally to just take it and like banging on the ground okay so I have an anvil on the back of my vise here and I was hitting it and I could see it start to move well it finally just popped the plug out so now it's just as simple as feeding the shaft up through the housing so there's the shaft and this shaft is bent a little bit kind of looks like it tries to bend about right in this area and it's so slight I don't even know if I can get that on camera now I do have a press and a torch and everything and I might try and straighten this which a lot of it is just going to depend on the condition of these threads down here it's like I say I have that I have a new one and I really just don't trust them because I, I put that new shaft in the one on the 861 and I moved something on the 4000 with my boom pole and it bent and I don't even remember what it was because it wasn't that long ago that I put that in there. Okay, once you get it down to just this bare housing, the last piece in here is a thrust bearing. And it's kind of buried at the bottom. It's probably covered in grease. Should just easily slide out. But you may have to hammer it depending on how much or what the condition of it is but there's the bearing and that's it that's completely disassembled now so that's all there is to disassembling the level box so now I just gotta get it all cleaned up sandblasted replace whatever needs replacing in it which I'll definitely be putting a new bearing in it the shaft I think is not going to be saveable just because the threads are so wore the bend I could live with but the threads not being there that's not good for lifting with the crank I'm gonna try and straighten it up and get it working properly I may weld it up a little bit. I'm not sure just yet. But once I get all this stuff fixed, I'll get everything sandblasted, get it reassembled, and then painted. All right, so I've got the level box all cleaned up and in primer. So now I'm gonna start putting it back together and get it ready to be painted blue. For starters, you're going to need a new 
thrust bearing. And then I'll put the number for it at the bottom of the video because this number here is just kind of a generic number. Okay, so on these thrust bearings, there's basically like a cap and then a piece inside that'll spin. Well, this spin part, you're going to want to put up. That way your rod will spin on this. And this thing is really greasy and dirty. I'm going to have to be sure and clean this up really well before I paint it. But like I say, the, the part that turns, put it towards the top. That's just going to slide down in there. We'll take our new rod and unfortunately I did have to use the new one the old one the threads on it were just too wore out and I didn't feel safe using it so hopefully I won't bend this one as soon as I use it like I did on the three or 861 so you're gonna slide that through next you're gonna take the gear Just stick the gear in there. I'm just going to mesh. And then we'll go ahead and slide our rod back in. And just line it up the pin. Okay, once you get that in there, just kind of make sure everything spins before you put your pin in it. I'm going to try and reuse the old pin. And the reason I'm going to try that, I just really don't trust these new ones, these new shafts. So if I have the old pin in it, it's a little easier just to knock it in and out versus having a new rivet in there. But as you can see, I had to hammer it in anyway, so it's not like it's going to go anywhere. And this should turn fairly easily. For some reason, mine's not wanting to. And I really think it's all because of this shaft. And there's no grease in here, so that don't help it none. But there's that much of it installed or put together. The next thing's going to be your expansion plug. And I'm, I may be wrong, but I'm almost wanting to say this is the same one that goes on a 8 in engine block. All right, so to install these, you got a dome side and a disc side. Put the dome side facing out. And you're going to take a hammer and just smack that down until it stays in there. When you do that, that disc will flatten out and wedge itself around the side. Now, the, the last thing to do is going to be put a grease fitting in it right here and pump it full of grease. But since I'm getting ready to go paint this one, I'm not going to do that. But 
but that's how you rebuild the level box i'll show you the final piece whenever i get the fork on here and get everything painted okay so here's the level box all painted i got the fork on it i did grease the threads in here however i can grease some more once i get it on track with that grease fitting and i got a new grease fitting here to pump this full of grease As you can also see, I have the rest of the links sitting here ready to go on the tractor as well. But I'm going to have that in a separate video, but I'll be sure to link it in this one as well.